Hi everyone, welcome to a new series all about Fabrics.js, an awesome open source JavaScript library that makes working with HTML Canvas super easy. Whether you are building something like a graphic design editor or any Canvas-based application, Fabrics.js has got you covered. One of the coolest things about Fabrics.js is that it lets you save your Canvas designs as SVG or JSON, making it perfect for creating scalable applications. In this series, I'm going to show you how to do a bunch of cool stuff, like setting up your canvas, adding basic objects, customizing your designs with styles and variables, and even creating auto layouts objects like in Figma. We will also cover how to export your designs in different formats like PNG, CSV or Google Slides. Today we are starting with the basics, setting up Fabrics.js version 6 with React. If you are new to Fabrics.js or React, no worries, I'll walk you through it step by step. By the end of this video, you will know how to set up a canvas and add some basic shapes. Before we begin, make sure you have all the necessary dependencies installed. We are using Fabrics.js version 6, which is a bit different from the older version 5. Be mindful of the version you are using because the syntax can vary. I have also added my icons and component library to speed things up, but you can use any UI library you like, such as Radix or Material UI. First things first. Let's set up a reference to our canvas element. This is important because it allows Fabric.js to directly interact with the DOM. In React, we use something called useRef to create this reference. So we'll start by importing useRef from React. useRef is a hook that returns a mutable object where we can store a reference to a DOM element. Here, we will use it to reference our canvas. This canvas ref will be connected to the canvas element in our JSX, allowing us to manipulate the canvas directly. To do that, we will add a ref attribute to our canvas element. What this does is link the canvas ref to our actual canvas element in the DOM. Now Fabric.js knows exactly where to execute its functions and we are ready to start building. We need to track whether our Fabric.js canvas has been successfully initialized. This is where use state comes in handy. UseState is another React hook that lets us keep track of values that might change over time, in this case whether our canvas is ready. We'll set up a state variable called canvas. We are initializing it as a null because at first the canvas isn't set up, but once we initialize it, we'll update the state so that we can use it later to add shapes or run other functions based on whether the canvas is ready. Now, let's actually initialize our Fabric.js canvas. For this, we'll use the useEffect hook, which lets us run some code right after the component mounts, basically when our React component is first added to the DOM. In useEffect, we first check if the canvas rep has been assigned to a DOM element. If it has, we can go ahead and create a new Fabric.js canvas using the canvas constructor. Let's break this down. First, we check if canvas ref current is available, which means that the canvas element is present in the DOM. We then create a new canvas instance by passing canvas ref current to Fabrics.js. This tells Fabrics.js to initialize on the specific canvas element. The width and height object sets the size of the canvas to 500 per 500 pixels. We can also set the background color of the canvas to white using init canvas background color. Then we call init canvas render all to make sure all these changes are actually displayed. Finally, we update our state with set canvas in it canvas to let React know that the canvas is now initialized and ready for use. The return statement at the end ensures that if the component unmounts, for example if you navigate away from the page, the canvas is properly disposed of to free up memory. To make sure our canvas is visible and properly positioned, we need to add some basic CSS. We want to reset the default margin and padding so that our canvas takes up the full available space without any expected gaps. We also use Flexbox in our main container to center everything on the page. This setup makes sure that our canvas is centered both horizontally and vertically, giving our application a clean and professional look. Now, let's add some interactivity. We'll create a toolbar with buttons that allows us to add shapes to the canvas. For example, let's set up a button that adds a rectangle. First, we will create a toolbar by adding a div container and place a button inside it. When the button is clicked, it will trigger the add rectangle function. But before we do that, let's style the toolbar to make it look good. 
This positions the toolbar on the left side of the screen, centered vertically. Now, let's write the add rectangle function to actually add a rectangle to the canvas. First, we check if the canvas has been initialized by seeing if canvas is not null. If it's ready, we can create a new rectangle using Fabric.js rect object. We set the rectangle's position, top and left, its size, width and height, and its color by using fill. Finally, we can add the rectangle to the canvas with canvas add rect. Now, when you click the button, a rectangle should appear on your canvas. The process of adding other shapes like circles or triangles is very similar. You just need to create a new function similar to add rectangle by using the circle object instead. Again, we check if the canvas is initialized, create a circle with specific properties like diameter and add it to the canvas. The steps are straightforward and you can follow this pattern to add any shape you want. And that's it for today's deep dive into Fabrics.js with React. We've covered setting up the canvas, adding basic shapes and styling the interface. In the next episode, I will explore adding controls to customize objects on the canvas, such as resizing, changing colors or adding effects. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comment section below what other topics you would like to see. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.